and okay. go. All right, so you know, I've got several tools here for my glazing. Um, you know, I've got my glazing knife here. This is this is like one of my own personals. I like the wood. This is like this is like a stiff putty knife, and I want you to notice some things about it. All right. Um, first is that it's shiny, okay, and um, the uh, and that it's heavy and that it doesn't flex. I really like it. Also, it's got this chisel on the other side. Now, for me. I only use one side of this, and this is a dedicated glazing knife. I don't use it for anything else. You can see it because I've actually got, you can see the, the dents starting to wear in the end of it from the, I guess the abrasives in the putty or, and the, you know, and then the wood there are starting to wear on the metal there. My, uh, my guy Israel, who works at the shop in Tampa, you should see his, I mean, he's got distinct indentations in his knife from having from glazed that much okay so this is a dedicated knife also it's smooth okay let me show you one that you would not want to use okay this is not a glazing knife see that I mean it's the same kind right it's got a chisel on the end and everything but see how dirty it is somebody's used this for one kind of putty They've used it for epoxy. They've used it for chiseling stuff out. You know, this is a good tool for a lot of stuff, okay? But this is not for glazing, okay? So when you come over to this little area to glaze, okay? I just put this here for demonstration. We'll put this aside. You grab one of these guys, okay? You see how see how smooth they are, okay? That's what you want because. That's what's gonna, when you, when you go to tool your putty, you're gonna tool it, and you want it to come out smooth. So that's how you do it. You, know, you, you start with the proper glazing knife, okay? So that's what, and all of these are really, you know, pretty good. See that? They're all pretty much the same, okay? This one, one of the students in the last class, he'd always go for this one, you know? Well, maybe so because it's got magic in it. I don't know, but. Um, but this one actually, you can feel the difference between one of these and this one. It just feels better. Okay, so um, those are in there. Um, those points that you guys have been pulling out are shot with one of these things. Okay, see my little diamond there. Uh -huh. So we're gonna set the glass with these. Okay, now. They won't go in deep enough most of the time. Maybe they will, but if they don't, this is a glazing hammer. It's got a trapezoidal head on it designed to set flat on the glass so that when you, you can tap that point in properly. And this is a good spot here to kind of illustrate what you see, because look, you see this glass, it fits on this shelf, right? Okay. It fits very nicely. I'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll just set it in right now, okay? Just like this. See how it sits nicely on that shelf? Okay, now that shelf is not just a shelf. That shelf becomes your guide, okay? Guide how? Well, because high quality glazing techniques keeps, when you put your, you gotta seal this in with that glazing putty, when you tool it, that glazing putty has to be tucked on the inside of that line. You see that? See, you can't have your glazing putty stick out beyond that line. I mean, obviously you can, all right? But if, you, if your glazing putty sticks out beyond that line, way out into here, then you can see it from this side, okay? So like all of these ones that you were finishing, maybe you didn't know to pay attention or not, but all of those glazing lines sneak up to this little shelf on the inside, but they don't go over, you see? Okay, so you're gonna see that come up pretty soon, okay? And that, and it's really important that when you're setting like these points, okay? I'll just put one, see how that, see how that clicks in like that? I'm gonna take that out in a second, okay? But maybe that won't, maybe, maybe 
I can come in here with my glazing knife and it'll be set deep enough, but maybe it won't be and watch. See how it'll, mm. it'll go over like that. You want to make sure that that point is set it's, while it's still holding the glass, but it's set in deep enough so that it maintains a, a hold on the glass, but your glazing knife will go over the top of it. See, and you can see, see the corner of my glazing knife represents where the, the, the glazing putty will terminate. You see that? You know, because I'm actually, I'm going to put more in here than I actually need, and then I will tool it to the shape, and that will create a cut where that excess is off to the side. All right, and then I can pick that out later. Okay, so see how that works? So, so I'm just going to pull that guy out because, well, I can pull the glass out that way. Let's point out. So, now here's the other thing too. One of the things I really like to do, especially on old sash, like what we're doing, is I don't just lay the, the bed, or lay the, lay the glass down on the shelf, just bare. I will put a bed of my putty down, okay? To cut, not just to cushion it, but because we have, inconsistencies or uh, high and low spots and things like that that happen over time and if we're using antique glass handmade stuff you have human induced inconsistencies there that need support right this glass here this is that flat glass I mean it's machined mechanically it's perfect you know but human made glass old wavy glass has slight imperfections and sometimes it actually has a bow to it so you put a bed down to account for all that and to seal that glass in and also support it at the same time, okay? Some people in the past, myself included, have used caulk to seal that in, but I stopped doing that because of experiences like that we had today, trying to get the glass out. You don't want to caulk it in, you know? It doesn't take too much more time to bed it than it does to, to caulk it. And, and the seal that you get, you get a seal that comes from underneath the glass, around the edges, and over the top. And that's one unified product that's there holding that glass in place. If you've got a water-based caulking here, urethane-based caulking holding that glass in, then you've got an oil-based product on top, those two are never gonna marry together, right? You know, you can do it, okay? But it's not going to be as good of an overall product in the end as if you just created that nice blanket all the way around. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I've got a. I'm going to go ahead and get started with this bedding process, and I'm going to use gloves. If you're glazing a lot, some people don't like to use gloves. I like to use the gloves, just you know, because you're going to get messy and stuff like that. These are larges. Um, I'm going to grab a handful of this stuff and I'm going to start kneading it up. This stuff is stiff. It's like cool. Uh, I'm surprised at how stiff it is. It's just, I'm surprised how cool it is. Do you know how hot it's been? What's that? In the freezer. It was in the freezer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna knead it up, okay? Here. And actually, what's that? That's what we did. We put the ice water in there, didn't we? Man, we're so intelligent. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny, man. That is so funny. So I'm gonna, now, you know, now I'm actually trying to warm it up with my hands. get it pliable okay so look lots of little micro techniques here i'm going to show you okay i don't expect you to remember them all okay but, you know you go back and watch the video right okay okay yeah youtube excellent right so 
I, this will go on YouTube, I can, I can promise you that. Um, so look, once you get it to that nice you know, pliability again, a lot of times it's just good right out of the bucket. Now I will say this, if I got a brand new bucket, one of the things I, I like to do is I like to take the whole thing out, all the contents, all of it out of the bucket, lay it on a, an absorbent surface like this, and then I'll just remix the whole thing, okay? Because this is, it's kind of like natural peanut butter in a way, where the oils in it will migrate one way or the other, depending on how it's stored. And it's always a good idea to just go through and remix the whole batch from the, from the get, because if you don't, you know, the top might be sticky and gooey compared to the bottom, which is dry and, you know, and, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. So, but you get it all the same consistency, then you're going to have the same experience throughout. I have people, they ask me, why is it so hard to work with a sticky? Well, I always tell them, you know, to remix it, okay? So, anyway, so I got this thing now. So I'm going to take some in my right hand. This first neck technique I'm going to show you, it takes you, you take your right hand, and the ball and the ball in your in your hand and you're gonna utilize your thumb to press down a bed of putty all along the shelf and I'm gonna use this edge of this shelf to scrape it off my thumb in a controlled fashion see see that okay so right hand left-handed bed Okay, I'm gonna, I gotta do, a, do it right here too, okay? Down here, right hand, bottom bed. This is not the only way, but this is a really good way, okay? There. Now, left hand, right hand side bed, okay? I'm scraping it off my thumb. It's not so easy, okay? I'm gonna go continue on top. Okay, there. Now, I get it all in. Then I'll place my glass on top, okay? And, Kevin? There's a, there's a place there. You came out? Okay, so yeah, that's good, thanks. See, one of the things that you're gonna see, as I go in here, you're gonna see this, this is gonna produce a little bit of squeeze out, okay? Watch, I'm just gonna press it gently in, okay? Now, it'll stick a little bit, so look, okay? See how it's squeezing out, mm -hmm. okay? Now, that, I got a long way I can go, okay? And what happened, you know, and Kevin, you know, you saw it, right? If it's not bedded far enough, mm -hmm. right? Then you have these gaps you have to fill in order for your work to look, like, look the part, you know what I'm saying? So. You could glaze it here if you wanted to, okay? But you really want to have that seated as far down as you can. And you can do that manually with your hands like that. You can see, you can see it pushing out, okay? Okay? But I'm going to show you a tool that I like to do that with. And it's this guy here. This is just a little sander, okay? A quarter inch or a quarter sheet sander vibrates. And what it's going to do, it's got a little... Um, rag on there as a pad to cushion it you know, and protect the glass. So put it down. safe way to get that done okay and you can see I mean, you can look and see how much more squeeze out you got okay you got a really good seal in there okay? and at this point I can go in I can click it in right with my my points typically I'm gonna do every six to eight inches or so and you can you can put one on the top and the bottom and if you want to, okay, in this case. But if you got it set there, you know, you might not need one at the top and the bottom. I'm, you see, I'm just, I'm just going ahead and tapping these guys in right now 
to ensure I've got a nice um, path to glaze in. And before I go really any further, I'm going to go ahead and take my squeeze out and carve it off. See that? And if I if I done my squeeze out properly, look look how thin that line is. Okay, but it's in there. Okay. It's in there, and it also creates the bridge that you need from your wood sash to your glass, right? I mean, you, you see, we, we took some of the spackle to kind of make up for where it was missed. If you do it properly, you don't have to. You don't have to make up for where you missed, okay? So, you can kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, I guess, you know? So, but I'll also... And that's the finish side that the customer Look right. out. Not, okay. I hear something. Look, I got a little I got a little bow right there. You can see here. I got a little crack there. It's either a, it's either my glass is bowed or my piece is bowed or a little bit. So I got a little mm -hmm. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. That's that's minor compared to everything else. And I, and I might push it down a little bit further in the process of glazing everything else in. Um one of those duster brushes, little four inch guys. The other thing I want to do while I have it out on this side um, is introducing this powder to you. This is my magic dust. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this magic dust to lick up these oils okay, because they will set up on you. Because the same way, the same thing that causes this putty to dry and set up in two days so you can paint it, it will start to harden up on your sash before you really, and make it so that it's hard to clean off. Okay, so you have to clean it off as you go. That's what I just do. That's, that's the magic dust. And people inevitably ask me what the magic dust is. Big secret. Drywall, yes. oh, Drywall mud. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put this putty in here and same same principle, I'm gonna have a ball in my hand, I'm gonna push it off my thumb, but this time my technique's a little bit different. Where before I was going opposite and pressing down, this side, I'm gonna take the same side, with my, like if I'm right-handed, I'll push it in my right side and push up and away, okay? To, and I'm scraping it off my thumb, see that? Mm. Put it here, okay? That's one way to do it. Now, if I want to do it with my left hand, which I do, I want you to practice right and left handed. Put it in on that side, okay? Good. See that? Now, the other technique, you can use your palm to shove it in, okay? I might accidentally press that on the glass. Oh. Well, you, press it, you can press it down on it, you know what I mean? As long as you don't press it hard, you break it. So, but you got to press it in, and you're shoving it into the crack. So, there, now I've got that. Okay, so look. That's, that's the process of loading. And now we're going to begin cutting. Ah, now this is esoteric. This, there's lots of hidden movements here, okay? So, the first one, okay, is how I hold my knife to begin with, okay? Now, most people look at something like this and the way that this tool is shaped, it suggests to hold it like this, okay? Because look, it's got a handle, right? But the handle's not a handle for me, it's like a counterbalance. I hold it a lot of times right here, see? Okay? See how it's gripped? Oh, see that's hard. So you wouldn't know that. That's a little hidden secret, okay? So when I, when I start, I'm gonna start like in this corner here, and I'm gonna take this corner here, that's gonna touch the glass. This blade here, that's gonna be on the wood. And that's the way it's gonna be every single time, just about, okay? The corner is on the glass, the end is on the wood. Now, whether it's this corner on the glass on this side, or this corner on the glass on that side, see that? You can see 
my indentation is where I've been dragging along the wood here, okay? I don't know if you see that in reflection in the camera or not, but you can see that drags along the wood. So I'm gonna stick it in here in the corner at approximately the, the approximate angle. Now here's something, I'm gonna take my hand away and I want you to look and see what angle my knife is at. Look at this, okay? Oh, okay. See how my knife, it's, my, it's, it's almost going to the right, okay? It's crazy. Everybody wants to go like this, so their angle is like that, okay? And they won't get good results. My angle is like this, okay? I'll take my hand away again so you can see. See that? Okay? And that's really hard to get, so that's like esoteric point number two, okay? Here we go. And then I'm going to pull, okay? And when I pull, I'm going to pull all the way to the end, okay? And when I get to the end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to maintain this, this angle of my knife, okay? All the way here, okay? But I'm going to hold it with my right hand. And when I get to the, this, this bottom rail closest to me here, this edge that's closest to the glass is going to hit that rail, and it's going to slide up, okay? And when it slides up, I'm going to keep the point, keeping the point on the glass, okay? I'm going to exit diagonally this way so all of those little things are contained in this one first movement okay watch now watch i'm gonna come up see how i'm sliding up okay out there see how i created a little corner right there ah now, I don't know if that's like the exact perfect corner, but man, it's, that's a really good start. Mm -hmm. So, having done that initial cut, now I'm going to come in for this move I call the corner chop. And different ways to hold the knife, but see, I've still got it up in the front of my hand. I'm going to come in here and there, see? I've already got my angle kind of defined for my cut this way. I can take this excess and put it in my bowl. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to take my left hand and see how I hold it in my left hand. Same way. I don't have the big old handle I'm holding it in the end. Come over here. Press it in the corner at the approximate angle I started in. Notice my bottom corner is going along the glass, and my end is touching the wood the whole way down, all the way. Now watch, see, I just touched this piece of wood right there, that corner, and I'm gonna slide up and then exit, see that? Then I can come in here, do my corner chop. Mm. See? Pull a little bit out, put it, in, put it back in. And this, aha, this is, a, this is a hard move. I'm gonna pull this up. Well, I can pull, well, I'll show you. I wasn't going to show you a move, but that pulled up so easy, I didn't need to do it. So here we go. So again, now I'm going to go left-handed here. Okay. Pull it down. Again, I'm going to stop. Look, look at the angle of my knife. Okay. It's not like this. I can go right or left, whichever I choose. Come in here like this, pull that in. Down. Corn chop. Now this was the, move, was the move I was gonna show you. This is called my running pick, where I take the edge of my knife here and I run it along the corner there as a guide. And I'm, I got pressure as this, this whole blade is sitting flat on the glass and see how it teeter-totters in there? Use that as a guide to push up and grab all of that and flick it into the center. All right? So once, once I get all those cuts done, then I go and I fix my corners. And this is another right and left-handed technique. I go right-handed 
and left-handed. Okay, but what am I doing, really, okay? Starting in a corner, and look, I'm exiting of somewhere about the middle, okay? I don't want to go all the way to the end. So I notice you cut a little more, is that? Uh... That's cut, kind of, I call that a micro slice. Uh -huh. It's like a little adjustment, because what I'm doing <clears throat> is I'm really looking for that little shelf underneath, see that? Uh, okay. okay. You can see the shadow. The shadow of the shelf, mm -hmm. okay? That's how I know I'm in the ballpark. Remember, I was leading that, leading with that information so that you would know that shelf was there, but that's what you're looking for when you're glazing, okay? So you're not likely to get it exact when you first do it. I highly doubt it. I mean, I, I, I don't always, you know? And then, then you have to go back and adjust. So there you go. So then you do a little micro slice stuff, okay? Okay. That. And you gotta adjust your corners. And it's, adjusting your corners is not easy. So this is why this guys, this is why we need all the time that we have left in this class. Okay? Because you guys have a six light sash and one light is hard <laughs> enough. Okay? One is hard enough. Okay, that's why you have to get your sash stripped, you know, and primed so that you can start your practice, all right? So you can um, be a perfectionist all you want to, you know, but, you know, to the degree, I mean, at some point in time, you know, you're going to have to get some primer on there, you know, and let it be what it's got to be.